let's chat about risk and Windows 10. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. So you already know that risk is everywhere. Heck, just getting out of bed, or for that matter, staying in bed, involves risk of some sort. And of course, using technology involves risk. Using our computer might not involve the physical or health risks associated with getting out of bed, or staying there, but it does involve risks associated with things like privacy and security and theft. Now, the end of Windows 10 support is the latest situation that's really forcing us to think hard about risk. Every decision is about managing risk, and there are no perfect answers. I've written about this before, that there is no such thing as safe, for example. You could be more safe, you could be less safe, but you cannot be absolutely safe. Everything involves risk. Risk management, then, is all about being safer, or as safe as you can pragmatically be. Windows 10's end of support is a great opportunity to examine risk. But this kind of thinking is important in the way you manage any technology. <laughs> Honestly, it, perhaps life itself. Now, at Windows 10's end of service later this year, you have four main options each with its own set of risks. Number one, do nothing. Maybe you don't like Windows 11, maybe your machine can't handle it, but one very important option to understand is to simply do nothing. Keep running Windows 10 after the end of support date. The risk is that security vulnerabilities would be discovered and not patched, and your security software might not protect you quickly enough or at all. Now, to be clear, this isn't about security software itself not being updated. Most will be, including Windows Security. It's about those updates arriving soon enough, or the vulnerability being something that security software can even protect against. Remember, even security software itself is never perfect. Option number two, of course, is to upgrade to Windows 11. If your existing machine supports it, you could upgrade to Windows 11. The risks here, well, a little less scary, I suppose, include not being able to acclimate yourself to the user interface changes, and that some of the programs you rely on may also have changed in ways that prevent you from using them as you did before. There's also a small chance that the software you run in Windows 10 might not run in Windows 11. Option number three, then, is to get a new PC for Windows 11. If your existing computer can't run Windows 11, replace it. The risks seem a little less risky, but still no less annoying. To begin with, you're spending money on new hardware. You're also dealing with your old machine, having to figure out whether you're going to recycle it or donate it or repurpose it somehow. And all of those compatibility and learning curve issues I just talked about in the previous option, they're still there as well. And of course, option number four, you could ditch Windows completely and switch to Linux. It should run just fine on your existing Windows 10 machine. The risks here are once again, primarily around getting used to the new interface. Linux is similar, but different enough to be a learning curve. You'll need to find Linux versions or alternatives to your favorite apps. One real risk is that you may not be able to. And Linux security is strong, but like Linux itself, different. And you'll need to learn perhaps a few new habits. Now, the controversy around all of this is simply this. Not everyone agrees with the risk assessments made by others. For example, in my opinion, you can keep on using Windows 10 safely after its end of support date if you follow best practices and make sure that your security software is running and its database is being updated regularly. This is what people who've disabled Windows Update in Windows 10 have been doing already, sometimes for years. This is what many people did at Windows 7's end of support. In fact, 
there are some people still running Windows 7. And this is what many people did at Windows XP's end of support. Heck, there may even be a few of those still running. Now, not everyone agrees with what I've just said. Some believe a major, dangerous vulnerability will surface after support ends, and hackers will jump on it fast, putting all of the out-of-support Windows 10 installations at unacceptable risk. My take is that while it's certainly possible, our experience to date says that it's extremely unlikely. There is no 100% risk-free path. There is no such thing as safe. You need to choose the amount of risk you're willing to live with and then make decisions for yourself accordingly. The good news here is that regardless of your choice, good security practices and smart decisions make it possible to stay safe. I'm curious, what's your risk profile? What's your risk tolerance? What kinds of things worry you the most? Not just about the Windows 10 to 11 situation, but risks in general, online and off. Let me know down below. If you've got a question for me, visit askleo.com slash ask. If you're interested in signing up for my weekly Confident Computing newsletter, that's at askleo.com slash newsletter. And if you want to chip in and help keep this thing running, visit askleo.com slash patron for all of the options available. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com.